Shalom. Welcome to Issachar Forum, a prophetic think tank. This is Les Lawrence with Elisha Vision Ministries. Glad to have you with us today. I am coming to you from a beautiful location in Dover, New Hampshire, as I'm ministering up in this part of the nation for the next two weekends. I uh, go from here on up to Conway, New Hampshire later on, and uh, look forward to being with you from up there. But uh, I'm going to do just a, a shorter version uh, today, but I do want to touch on a few uh, uh, items in the news in Israel that are good news. Uh, but let's begin with a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we love you and we thank you for your faithfulness. I pray that you would just bless Israel, bring peace, Lord, to Jerusalem, your peace, the peace of the Messiah, Yeshua. Hallelujah. And also we thank you for the rains in Israel, Lord, that have even late spring rains that have been falling. And we just give you the praise and the glory, Lord, and honor you, Jehovah God, as the faithful God, the, the only true living God. And we bless you. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your son, Jesus, Yeshua ben Yehovah. In his name we pray. Amen. Well, I do want to share a few things with you. Um, Israel's getting ready to celebrate their uh, 75th Independence Day, 75 years as a nation. Wow, what a glorious time uh, and blessing of the Lord. I, I talk a lot about the fact that God has, uh, in the, in the uh, course of uh, history, from 70 A.D. until uh, 1948, Israel never won a war. And from 1948 to the present, they've never lost a war. What happened? Well, God turned the page from judgment uh, on Israel. That was almost over 1,800 years to now it's a time of blessing and favor and restoration as the promises, the unconditional promises he made to the forefathers are being fulfilled uh, in our day. And, and it's a miracle and, a miracle nation, 75 years now in modern times, and we just praise God for that. Hallelujah. Amen. So uh, Israel is celebrating their 75th anniversary in the next few days, and uh, in spite of all the attacks, in spite of the terrorism and the internal struggles with the government and demonstrations and everything going on, the fact is that Israel is a massive success. Uh, they've been blessed, and, and they're a great success in spite of those things that are going on. So we just thank God for that. Hallelujah. And we continue to pray for them. And uh, I'm going to uh, also want to mention that uh, in uh, Israel right now, just about half of the Jews of the entire world are now in Israel, living in Israel. That is a miracle in itself. They were scattered. The Jews have come back from over 150, I think maybe even 180 different nations now. And they're back in the land. Hallelujah. And uh, God is keeping his word. And, of course, Ezekiel prophesied that in Ezekiel uh, 36, 37, 38, especially 37. Can these bones live? And, uh, and indeed they can as God is re bringing them back from all over the world. Hallelujah. And uh, so we rejoice with Israel in that. And then this week, um, they had an unusual visitor to Israel. Um, the crown prince of Iran, who's in exile after the overthrow of, of the monarchy of Iran, uh, their, the crown prince uh, is very pro-Israel. In fact, he was at the Western Wall, met with officials of Israel, and he uh, was also talking to, uh, or actually, and talking to God, he was at the Western Wall and praying at the Western Wall and, uh, and making wonderful statements of support for Israel. And so uh, I pray that, that he'll be the, be the Shah of Iran again in the future and that, that the uh, Ayatollahs and the radical jihadist uh, Iranian Revolutionary Guard and all of those will be, that they'll be overthrown and there'll be peace in Iran. Uh, God is working in Iran, uh, over a, a million Iranians have been saved in recent years, and, and there's a great underground church movement there in, in Iran, and so we just continue to pray for them. Hallelujah. And then uh, another good piece of good news is that the uh, Israel has just opened a new embassy in, of all places, Turkmenistan. <laughs> Turkmenistan is on the uh, north, and let's see, I guess it's the uh, north eastern 
borders of Iran, basically on the other side of Iran from Israel. And uh, having an Israeli embassy there is really a wonderful thing. And it gives Israel uh, basically access to Iran right on the borders. Uh, Azerbaijan is also friendly to Israel, and Israel's been able to come in uh, to that area and, and, and infiltrate Iran with the Mossad and with various things to be able to be uh, having spies and so forth, knowing what's going on in Iran. So this is just another uh, blessing in that direction, and I praise God for that. And uh, President Herz Herzog in Israel has been meeting with the uh, opposition leaders and with uh, the Israeli governmental leaders uh, on the subject of the judicial reform, and they're making progress. Uh, he actually stated uh, yesterday that dialogue on judicial reform can lead to a positive outcome. Uh, he's optimistic uh, <clears throat> that they're going to be able to solve this so that when the Knesset comes back in session, uh, there, there won't be a lot of problems internally in the opposition, the government, and all that, but that they'll actually be able to reach a positive outcome. So that's what I'm praying for, and we need to pray for that ourselves. Uh, and then um, some uh, interesting news. A, a Jordanian minister of parliament of, of Jordan uh, was arrested at the Israeli border trying to smuggle weapons into Israel. Now, that's a pretty serious thing. And uh, in fact, it's not just a few weapons, but it's actually uh, over 200 weapons uh, that he smuggled in. Uh, it included uh, 100, well, excuse, for, uh, let's say it's 12 long weapons, long rifles, uh, 12 Zig pistols and 167 Glock pistols and 108 kilograms of gold. So something, he was up to something no good. And uh, the good news is that uh, they arrested him. And of course, Jordan uh, is all up in arms, saying, release him immediately and all that. But Israel's not going to be doing that right away until they find out what's really going on, where he was smuggling those weapons to inside Israel. Pretty serious. And uh, and then one final thing I want to mention, just in good news, is that Israel has developed a laser, a high-energy laser, that is going to uh, be better than the Iron Dome that they use uh, and uh and this is, I believe this is called the iron laser or something like that. But anyway, it's, uh, it can actually hit a target the size of a cone more than six miles away. And uh, one of the best things I read about this laser defense weapon is that the, uh, the iron dome, every time they shoot off one of the missiles to defend themselves against a rocket from Hamas or Hezbollah and so forth, uh, it actually costs each missile that Israel fires in defense is $80,000 every time they fire one. And in the last war in Gaza, they actually fired uh, sometimes 100 of them in a day. And that's $80,000 each time they do it. So that's that's horrible. <laughs> well, guess how much the laser costs each time they fire it? And it does the same thing as the, and even better than the Iron Dome. It's $2.00. $2 uh, each time they fire the laser weapon. So we need to pray that they'll perfect that. It's it's supposed to come online in full usage next year. Uh, they're already using it to some degree and experimenting with it and demonstrating it and so forth. And it'll also actually be a great uh, moneymaker for Israel as they're able to sell it and spread it around, uh, you know, in, uh, in to other countries that want to defend themselves. So... All in all, uh, there's good news, <laughs> and uh, we need to continue to pray for Israel and pray that, that uh, God will bless them. Uh, I don't know if you can see behind me. It's just beautiful. It's just beginning, the grass is beginning to grow here in, in Dover, New Hampshire, and, uh, and, and it's beautiful. It's actually a little rainy today. We had a great service this morning at Milton Community Church uh, in uh, had a, am enjoying great, wonderful hospitality and sweet time with Jim and Donna Whedon, the pastor here in, in the church. And, and we're going to have another meeting tonight uh, talking about Israel and, and uh, what God's doing. So hallelujah. If you're in the area, come out and <laughs> see us tonight. But uh, I pray that you'd just uh, be praying for me and for our ministry here up in New England and, 
And also pray for our Israel tour, which we're going to be doing uh, next uh, September, this coming September. We actually do have about three or four slots still available. If anyone uh, wants to hop on here at the end, it's possible to do that. Uh, just contact me if you're interested. But let's let's go ahead and close in prayer. And thank you for tuning in today. Heavenly Father, we love you and we praise you. And thank you, Lord, that you are so faithful and you keep your word even to a thousand generations. We bless Israel. We thank you for the rain. And we just say, Lord, your will be done. Not our will, but your will be done, Father. In the name of your son, Jesus, Yeshua ben Yehovah, I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. Shalom, shalom.